Thank you, Scott. I think it's impossible to exaggerate the importance of the work that uh, Scott and ARF are doing with this initiative. So uh, from one trade association to the other to the next, uh, I just want to say a big thank you for what has been a wonderful collaboration over the last uh, year in this. So on to the study. Um, Scott, I mean, I think you, level, you kind of did a great level set. This is a study about opportunity to see. It's a large neuroscience study, consumer neuroscience study. It's actually, I think, the largest, uh, at least to my knowledge, in, in the mobile space. And I think the best way to describe it is that, you know, we just focus on the first three seconds and we put a big magnifying glass into what we say, you know, the, the first three seconds of the life of an ad. And we try to answer the question, really, how much time does an ad need to be on the screen in order to start triggering that effect of attention and the cognitive process of cognition is kind of a kind of a kind of an interesting word, so I'm not using cognition per se, but you know, co cognitive process. So this is opportunity to see big implications for currency, for viewability, for all those things. We didn't go into effectiveness. We're going to do that on phase two. We're planning a phase two. I'm going to talk about that uh, hopefully in the in the next uh, few minutes of the presentation. Um, but opportunity to see is a, a space where there's a lot of research, and a lot of that has to do with uh, eye tracking and what people see, or behavioral kind of analytics in terms of what people do and what is missing. It's, it's the thing in the middle, what people think and how they process information, and this is why we kind of focus on that. So we kept the eye tracking piece, we kept attention, but we also added uh, an, an EEG component. EEG stands for electroencephalography, and then we basically measure two things. The one is uh, information that is being processed by the working memory. The other one was uh, the emotional response in advertising and uh, you know, whether you basically have a kind of an approach or avoidance motivation in response to the stimulus that was, uh, that was uh, shown. Uh, again, all that is focused on the mobile feed environment, which could be news feed or, or social feed. We tried, we tested a number of different kind of feeds and it was based on an experimental design. So, in the next five minutes, I have three findings that I want to share with you. The first one is the actual answer to the question, how long does it take, right? And you know, I want to say that it's fast. You know, the whole cognitive process was very, really fast, but just to put a kind of a specific data point for you, it takes about 400 milliseconds, which is less than a second, for two-thirds of the ads to be seen and processed. Now, this is the supporting data for that. Attention is on the left side. The cognitive processing is on the right side. On the horizontal axis, you see the different speeds that we tested. You see that about 400 milliseconds, you have uh, two-thirds of ads being uh, seen or processed. Now, take a look at this. This is desktop. Now, the one conclusion that you can easily draw from this is that th these two things are different. They're very different, right? This orange line is more flat and it's definitely kind of, kind of, you see that it reaches a kind of a ceiling at about 60-65%, uh, which means that it takes a uh, desktop environment about six or seven times longer to establish that kind of opportunity to see or the, the cognitive process, right? And why is that important? I mean, we kind of think about those two environments interchangeably. We do have the same standards. Uh, but they're very, very different, right? Just because we control exposure time doesn't mean that we can control the cognition process. So that's finding number one. Now I'm going to talk about video versus static, and, and this is a, a quote for uh, Tony Robbins fans, I think someone mentioned it yesterday, motion drives emotion, and by that I mean that, you know, video works in a very, very different way in the way that it, it uses attention. Now it's interesting, it's interesting that if you look at the attention data, there's no difference between static and video. They basically have you know, the, the same kind of uh, likelihood that they're being seen in a mobile phone environment. It's what they do with that attention that is very different. And you can see here that the video ads are much more likely to kind of convert that attention into an emotional process, an emotional response. Now, I want to be careful here because I don't, we, this can be positive, it could be negative. I'm not saying that it's a good or bad, it just is. Right? It is an emotional response that is, that is stronger for a video ad, and it behooves us to think about what type of creative we put in front of people so that this is positive right? and not negative. Because here's what happens if it's negative, and I'm going to go to the third finding. 
I'm going to talk about effectiveness a little bit here. It wasn't the goal of the study, but we, we had to kind of select ads in a balanced way. So we, we selected uh, half of the ads to be very, you know, we knew that they were strong performers. The other half were weak performers. And we wanted to kind of analyze as well, you know, how, how they kind of start working in a different way. And if there's something that we can learn from the first three seconds of the life of an ad. And what we found out is that those ads start failing early. And what I mean by that is not that they don't get attention. You see that they get the attention. It's again what they do with that attention. Now, what you see on, this, uh, on the right-hand side is the low performance ads and how they basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the emotions associated with, the, with, with those ads. And you see all these different speeds. So basically, so I keep, <laughs> I keep looking the, right, or the wrong place. So you see that all those speeds from zero to one second, these are negative emotions. There's no positive emotions associated with those ads in all the speeds from, one, uh, from zero to one second. And I think this is a very important finding. It's a very important finding because we have a fixation about controlling exposure time. And, and we think, and, and we do that partly because we, it's the only thing that we think that we can control and partly because we think that, you know, it improves our chances of, of our creative to work better. But the truth is that we don't necessarily have that time, right? It's, it's an illusion. And, and the truth is, and this is the quote from the Wall Street Journal when they were covering our is that mobile ads tend to do a lot more work. I'm not using effectiveness, but they do have a lot of, they create a lot of kind of response very, very early, much earlier than we thought. So we have to ask ourselves if this is the right kind of work that they do, right? If they, uh, if we're designing those ads, with a first second sensibility, if we're putting our best foot forward with those ads, or if we're basically shooting ourselves in the foot right from the get-go. And, and I think this is what I, you know, the, the thought that I wanna leave you with, right? And, you know, I wanna kind of, for those of you who have brands and who put creative in front of people, ask yourself, do you have a first second strategy? Uh, we think about six seconds, and we think about 15 seconds, we think about 30 seconds. I'm not talking about a one second commercial, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, are we specifically thinking about how we maximize our you know, chances of, of having kind of a first kind of good impression? Because we can only make a, a first impression once, right? So uh, we don't have the answer to, to those things. I mean, we started building a framework at the MMA in terms of like what that first second strategy could be. It has to do with like visual attention, uh, salience, and emotional salience, and it has to do with a number of different things based on, uh, on existing research. But we're gonna do a, be doing a second phase, as I said, and whoever is interested to participate, uh, come and find me uh, after this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, we've gone to take some questions. Yeah.